What did this homeboy break now? What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on Rose, on Jared's Evo 10 that used to be the former former Rose of Bobby Wallace, her old Evo 10. And uh, we got some fixings to do on Jared's car today. And we got, he doesn't know this, but we got some surprise mods for Jared, which I'm super stoked for. Keep her coming, keep her coming. All right, Jared. Fuck no, don't put it on. Explain yourself. What's that's going on snow. here? That's just, that's just from having fun in the snow. All right, so today we're gonna be fixing Jared's oil pan. I'll pull the car up in the air and I'll show you guys what's going on, but when we were doing the clutch on this car, like, oh, sick filter. <laughs> well, this happened last time. <laughs> that's hilarious. Damn, that no filter life though. Um, so what I was saying is last time we were doing, or working on this car when we were doing the clutch, we got the car up in the air and noticed the bottom of the engine was a little bit oily, a little bit wet, and it looked like the oil pan was cracked. So I looked a little bit more into it and she's cracked a little bit around the drain plug. So how dirty is it? Not bad. Um, yeah. What are you doing with your wheel? You trying to rattle can that thing? Well, it's not worth like dismounting it and taking off the tire and- There's gotta be some black touch up. Right here. Nighthawk, Nighthawk Black Pearl. Wipe her down with the IPA, get it a little bit cleaned up. Oh, man. Gonna be Dude, it's gonna look way, that shit's... That does look real bad. We did pick up a new oil pan from, I believe it was ME Performance. Yeah, it's ME Performance. The problem with swapping out an oil pan is after you put that gray sealant, the RTV on there, you have to let that dry for about 20 to 24 hours before you put oil back in the engine. So Jared's gonna be taking up a lift for a day straight. Dude, it's like chunks. It is very chunky. Oh wait, this is not an oil pan. This is a fuel system for a car in an oil pan. Hell yeah. Is that oh, right? you ordered your, uh, is it for the eight? Let me put those aside. No one knows I own those. Yep, we'll check an oil pan. All right, bro. We got another item for you, okay? What the fuck did you get me, bro? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> well, take a look at the box. It says Devin Nemo on her. Yeah. What, it, what could it be? Hmm. Motherfucker, what's in the box? <laughs> So you have to open this box and we gotta figure out if we're gonna install this item first or your oil pan first. Oh Wait, feel it. Rattle it around a little bit. Bro. <laughs> I know you know what they are. I know what, what, it's kinda heavy. It's definitely metal. <laughs> what is it? I'm nervous. Dude, what the fuck is this? Woo! <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Now you can curb your wheels or easier because now the yeah the, the closer to the <laughs> closer to the curbs. These look sick too. So funny because I almost ordered some the other day. I'm like my wheels look bummy as hell, set three feet into my fenders. So we picked up Jared some what are these 20 mil? I believe they're 20 mil spacers, four rows. Even though you know he keeps curbing the wheels and breaking his mesh on the front and cracking oil pans, she still deserves to look a little bit better. So we got him some good old spacers. Well, I know how you drive. I didn't want to get you cheap ones and then you break it. Your wheel goes flying off. Dude, these things are beautiful. Dude, Holy. It's like a satin finish on it and everything. What the hell? I've never seen spacers this, actually this nice in my life. Damn, son. These are nice. Woo. These are sweet. It's like a barbell. I feel like I'm lifting. Man, I know I beat the piss out of Rose. But I really do want to make her pretty. <laughs> if you're a poor boy like me or like Jared and you can't afford new wheels or if it's winter, I think wheel spacers is always a super, super solid option to go with. With Bobby's car, I think we ran either 15 or 20 mil on the stock wheels. And then these are 20 mil. And I think these on rows are gonna make it look a thousand times better. <laughs> All right, Jared, we're gonna fill these on your car. We'll show you the oil pan first. Spacers. spacers first? Hi, right, say less. These things are super beefy. I've ran a lot of spacers on a lot of vehicles. Let's see. M3's got spacers, Bobby's car had spacers. We had to buy spacers for the truck in the rear. And I can honestly say, these things are probably the most high quality spacer I've ever seen. Here's how she looks, all stock, with the wheels sticking in. Let's get this thing up in the air. Pull off some wheels, slot these bad boys on, and see how she looks. The Evo 10 factory wheels already look pretty good. So these things are gonna look amazing now. Double 
spacers are very, very easy to install, guys. All you gotta do is pop off the factory wheel. This guy's gonna chill on there just like that. And she fits beautifully. The black nuts that are on the wheel spacer studs, we're gonna put on the factory wheel studs. And then the wheel is gonna bolt to the new stud. All right, we got the wheel spacers on the passenger side and we're gonna get this thing down on the ground, do a little side by side, see how much better it looks because the car's already lowered. And when it's lowered and the wheels stick in, it makes it look like it sticks in even more. So that's a before on the front. There's the back. Oh, way better. Oh man, that's way a better. million times better. Turn the wheel straight. There was either an option to do 20 mil or 25 mil, and I would rather play it safe and not get 25 and then potentially have rubbing issues, especially in the winter, because we all know that Jared likes to rally this thing in the winter, but we have a 20 mil. That look, that's straight there. That looks good. That looks a thousand billion times better. So the cool thing about these spacers, they are forged out of 7075 T6 aluminum, super, super high grade aluminum, and they do have 12.9 grade studs as well. So we'll never have to worry about breaking a stud on these things. If you look closely at the back here, you can see all those veins. These do have the world's first patent for active cooling. Those veins right there and the knurling on the edge. It's supposed to help keep everything cool when the wheels are rotating. They did also come with a 10 year warranty, so if they ever break, or if we break a stud, or if we break anything on these things, 10 year warranty, we'll be good to go. So if you wanna pick up these bonus wheel spacers, which are formerly known as blocks, these boys will be linked first thing down in the description box below. All right, let's get this thing up in the air, get the other two spacers on, and we gotta get this oil pan swapped out as well. She's got oil in her. Dude, could you imagine? <laughs> no Nothing way. comes out. As you guys can see, this thing's quite wet, quite leaky. So we are going to just completely swap out the pan. The thing's completely hammered, as you can see. I don't know what Jared's been running over, but. So what we gotta do is pull off this bracket right here for the AC compressor. And then there are like a thousand bolts for the oil pan itself. All right guys, we got the oil pan off. She's a little, She's a little warped, as you can see. I hate pulling pans off. It doesn't matter if you're if you're not trying to save it, but if you're trying to pull a pan off that's RTV'd on and you're trying to save it, it's a joke. Um, I didn't really notice a ton of damage on the ceiling surface with the pan, so I think, well, either way, the pan was destroyed, so we're gonna replace that. Completely reseal it. That should take care of some of the oil leaking issues, but I'm pretty sure that oil cooler lines, there's crush washers on each side that are up on top, of the engine girdle up there, and those may need to be replaced, which might be kind of fun. But for now, we're just gonna finish up this oil pan job. She's nice and clean under here. I wonder how many miles are on this build, Do you know? Probably like 10,000, 15,000. Yeah, miles. probably around 10 to 15,000 on the build. Now the fun part, scraping all the gasket. I do gotta say though, after doing the M, and then coming to this thing, I, this makes me appreciate Evos. Getting the M oil pan off was like three years. This is three minutes. So we got the entire gasket surface cleaned up with a razor blade and brake cleaner. And now what we're gonna do is pull out the pan. Where's that boy at? We're gonna run through and clean this thing up. Even though it's brand new, there could still be dirt and debris in there. So run through with brake cleaner, get her nice and clean. And then we're gonna apply the sealant to this surface here. We got all of the RTV. A decent amount of RTV on this new pan. She ain't ever gonna leak again. So let's slap this thing on there. So what we're gonna do is throw it up on there, hand thread, or hand tighten all the bolts for it. Let it sit for like, they want you to do an hour, but I'll probably do like 45 minutes. Torque everything down to spec, and we have to wait a full 24 hours before we put the oil back in the motor. All right, we went through and torqued down the oil pan after about an hour of letting that seal on dry. Now we did also decide to swap out the crush washers on the oil feed lines or the oil cooler lines as well. It was super, super wet up there 
and I figured while we're tearing into this car, we might as well swap these things out. We gotta wait 24 hours. We can put the oil back in it. So I'm gonna pick this video back up tomorrow. All right, guys, let's get this thing back together. We went to Napa this morning and picked up these four washers, the ceiling washers for the oil cooler. We're both onto the engine. That was definitely leaking quite a bit as well. So clean up the lines, clean up where they bolt on, make sure we have a good ceiling surface, slap these things on, get the car on the ground and throw some oil in it. We should be good. All right, guys, the engine is all sealed up, cleaned up, ready to go. We just have to add some oil, but while this thing's still up in the air, let's go ahead and pop on those spacers on the driver's side. I'm super stoked with how this thing's looking with spacers. It's just like Bobby's STI when you added the 15 mil, completely changed the look of the car. And they're only about hundred bucks for the set versus the cheapest wheels possible, like Bobby's winter wheels are about 500. She's all topped off on oil. I'm gonna fire it up, let it run for a while. Make sure we don't have any sort of leaks left on the car and Rose should be back on the road. Looking better than ever. I tried to clean it up as best I could before we added the oil, just to make sure we don't have any more oil leaks. And it looks like so far we're good to go. I don't see anything dripping down. Nothing's wet as of yet. It's only been like five minutes, but yeah, I think we're good. Dope. There's one last thing that this car needs and I know Jared and even when Bobby owned this car, they both talked about it. The interior lights on this thing are trash. They're not stock, there's some aftermarket LEDs, but they are very, very dim and dull and poopy. So I'm gonna slap some of these boys in there. So the one on the right is a before and that one's after. It's like a thousand times brighter. Overall, I'm super stoked with how this thing came out. I know it's not a major change. Well, it is kind of a major change. And I know Jared's gonna be happy about not having to add oil to this thing all the time because that freaking pan and the oil cooler lines would not stop leaking. Looks sick. I love it. Rose is back in action. Looking better than ever. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Peace out. I'll see you boys tomorrow.